Do you have a scientific role? Yes. What is the what is that scientific role? Can you say, you know, it's to monitor monitor the safety situation? It's what can you explain that? We more we are gathering scientific information in relation with the the ashes, and we are providing them with go for governments for them to take a decision on how to deal with this matter. But there are scientists that say that it's not safe yet today. Well, uh, uh, then, then we will see in the news this evening. But I am absolutely sure that there is no government, given the principle of precaution, who would take the risk of sending planes into the sky at risk. Is there a breakdown in the communication between your scientists and the government officials? Do you have scientists that you speak to in the, in the countries? Of course. Or is it, is it that there's that you're going from your scientists to government officials who may not understand and, and be able to communicate not, about not, the science. Not, not, not at all. The scientists are speaking to the scientists. The, air, the Airline Transportation Association, what they said is that I, you guys should have come up with some kind of ash concentration standard. Like, you're saying that you provide the scientific information, but geographically countries are, are placed differently. But they're also applying a totally different standard. I mean, you give them information, but is that, I think maybe what they're trying to get at is that if there's no, if there's no systemic uh, standard being applied, then it doesn't make any sense. Do you, what do you say to that? Do you have a standard? No. No, we don't have a standard. And no. if IATA is saying that we can do better, all of us, they are right. But you have to understand that we, we, do, we do not have this kind of problem of ashes every morning. This is a unique case. We have to be clear of that. It's unique or not, it's a deadly case. It's quite dangerous and it can happen again. There's another volcano called Katla that may blow as well. So, so moving forward, are you accepting that we just have to live with a, a chaotic situation internationally or are you going to maybe make some recommendations, maybe there might be some sort of coordination no, here no, that would no, help to no, alleviate no. some of the pain and the chaos in the future moving Sorry. forward. Our main business is safety. I safety. Safety. This is our main business to protect lives. This is one the of uh, strategic objective of ICAO number one. And we cannot put that in danger. We cannot tell these states open the airspace because we feel that this no. This is this is something that is not our 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 prerogative to do that. The states are responsible for the safety following the standards of ICAO. The standards, we have a standards of minimum of visibility, minimum of ceiling. There are standards for that. The states, they follow that. There are no standards at this moment for how, what is the concentration of ashes, 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 ashes that could affect the engines. There is not a standard at this time. But we cannot invent the standards. We have to work with the industry. It's a process. It's not as easy to say it's a crisis in the world and we have to do something in order that it not, not be a crisis. We prefer this crisis than, than losing lives. This is our business. What's the process now to develop an ash concentration standard? Are there... This, this is something that we have to work with the industry. It's not an easy issue. There are many variables. We are not experts in ashes. I have to, to be honest. I am telling you what we listen from the experts, from the scientifics, but, but, but it, it's not easy to, to develop an standard. If you don't have a standard for the concentration of ashes, how do you say that it's safer now to fly it? Be because if there are ashes, we don't fly. I mean, let me, let me tell you something in relation to what the standard. If you ask uh, manufacturers of engines, what is the concentrate of, of ashes that your engine can sustain? He will not answer you. Because it's a matter of liability. You see? At the end of the day, everyone is looking to liability. And that's why I'm saying no one will fly if there is a risk. Now, the airlines, IATA, was claiming that they could fly safely whilst governments were closing their airspace. You see? So the situation is not as easy as it was said. Of course there was a crisis. Two days ago, Ayata said, we can fly. Why are you closing? Government said, we close. Today they opened. So uh, in view of the fact that you say that it's not within your purview to make a decision one way or another, it's not within your purview or your powers or whatever to make a decision one way or another to 
open the airports or not to open the airports is left left up to the government. Two or three so do you years. think that uh, it is uh, up to the um, that there should be some sort of an entity which should be able to coordinate between countries to make such a decision or to evaluate the situation as it is? No, if, if there is an this organization is who has to develop a standard, it would be ICAO. Yes. That's the only organization dealing with aviation internationally. And we have had a, a, a council meeting yesterday, mm -hmm. a and special, what is one, for special one on this issue. And we are going to convene a group of people, industry, manufacturers, IATA, governments, scientists, to start working on this standard. So, so you, you believe that there should be course, guidance now, material. There should be some coordination now in order to evaluate the situation and then come up with one so some sort of a policy which becomes like uniform across the board. That will be the guidance material that will be the outcome of the convening of these meetings. Today, at technical when, level. When will it, will it be published the, the recommendations? Oh, you, you will have to wait a little. It's not a matter of two weeks' work, now, you know. Oh. <laughs> yes. there's, this, there's a dispute where 13 countries in Africa say they're being barred. Their, their airlines in, in whole are being barred from the EU. They do claim it's discriminatory. And I also wondered what ICAO thought of the U.S. and Nigeria, that whole situation after the, the Northwest plane that you mentioned, where they barred whole countries from flying in, where Nigeria has been required to take or has seen fit to take uh, uh, additional steps. Where, where does that stand and what guidance are you providing yeah, to countries like the U.S.? First, as you know, the 14 states list doesn't exist anymore. So Nigeria is not on it, neither any of these states is on it. The United States and Nigeria has concluded an agreement on anti-terrorist activities. And I was last week in Abuja, where we had a major uh, regional aviation security conference at ministerial level, looking to solutions to the Northwest issue, as we are doing it in all other regions of the world. And this is to concentrate on uh, collection and data sharing, on enhanced screening standards, but also on assistance to a number of countries. Isn't there an EU list, though? Isn't there a list in the EU of 13 no, you African are countries? Yeah. You are I know it's a separate issue. It's two different it's questions. A, it's safety. This is what is called an EU, between brackets, blacklist of a number of carriers, African carriers in their majority, who are banned of flying to the EU, but not for security reasons. It's for safety reasons. For safety. They are not safe. Safety. They, they are not safe. safe. And what steps are being made to either, either to make them more safe or to help them become more yeah. safe? Yeah, to make them Does more IKEA safe. Does have a role in that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. We have an assistance program for these countries. Okay. And one last thing. There's, I know there's a request for have Taiwan join or become an observer at ICAO. Where does that stand? You've received a number of letters from countries. What's the process for making a decision on that? We follow, we follow the policy of United Nations. So it's not even okay. worth these countries we that are writing to, to you. It's not worth the paper that, that they're spending. Is that yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Sorry, we have to leave now. Okay, thank you.